different um, format of, of racing that a lot of us haven't experienced and something that we, we'd like to see grown more and obviously within that towards the end of Ian's talk he was he was mentioning setting up a club and teams and developing other people which leads us in really nicely to our next talk um, which is by Charles Jepson and Charles is going to talk to us about the Clarion Cycling Clubs which I think are probably the, the best established clubs in the country would you say Charles? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's anything being about longer is there? Okay, so Charles Jepson. Thank you. Just, just for clarification, I'm, I'm the secretary of National Clarion 1895, which is now a, a separate club from National Clarion, but I'll just make that distinction. So, uh, William Morris, the 19th century art and craft textile designer, poet, artist, he wrote in a novel called A Dream of John Ball. People who know history will know that John Ball was involved in the Peasant Revolution, in the Peasant Revolt. He wrote this about John Ball. For a sooth, brothers, fellowship is heaven, lack of fellowship is hell. Fellowship is life, lack of fellowship is death. Fellowship is life, lack of fellowship is death. Is, is adopted by the Clarion as its motto, and is still the motto today of the National Clarion Cycling Club, 1895. So, William Morris was quite influential to the people who founded the Clarion Cycling Club. Clarion Cycling Club was founded in Birmingham in 1894. It was founded as a, a Labour church by six young socialists who were members of the Bond Street Labour Church. And initially, they called the club the Socialist Cycling Club. But at the second meeting, they changed the name to the Clarion Cycling Club because they were readers of the Clarion newspaper. And their object was to form a cycling club that would combine the pleasures of cycling with a propaganda of socialism. So from day one, they were a cycling club and a political organisation. The Clarion newspaper was edited by a campaigning journalist called Robert Blackford. Um, the newspaper first appeared in Manchester in 1891. Blackford wrote on the pen name of Namquam Dormiai, I Never Sleep. And in the paper's first edition, he set out the paper's policy, which I'll read so it gives you a background to the paper. The Clarion is a paper meant by its owners and writers to tell the truth, frankly and without fear. It may not always be right, but it will always be sincere. Its staff do not claim to be witty or wise, but they do claim to be honest. They write not for factions, but for the people. They fight not for victory, but for the truth. They seek not to dazzle, but to, not, but to please. Not to anger, but to convince. Wheresoever wrong exists, they will try to expose it. Towards baseness, cowardice, self-seeking or roguery, no matter where or in what class it may appear, they will show no mercy. Blackshirt's paper soon gained massive readership because it was very, very popular with ordinary working people. He explained the policies of socialism in numerous simple language. At the time, socialism was in its infancy and it was very eyebrow, um, very um, doctrinal and very intellectual. But Blackford came along and he put it in very, very simple terms that people could understand. And the paper soon had a readership. It was a weekly paper, it cost a penny. And it soon had a readership of over 80,000, which was quite phenomenal at the time. The staff of the newspaper all had nicknames and people saw them almost as, as personal friends. When the paper dropped through your door, these people were familiar with you. You were familiar with their style of writing and, and they were like friends. At Easter 1894, seven members of the new Clarion Cycling Club decided they were going on an Easter tour. 
And they took their bikes, initially by train to Wolverhampton, and then they did a tour down the valley of the River Severn. They turned in for Easter Sunday to the Labour Church service in, in Birmingham, where they belong. Labour churches have been set up um, really to provide facilities for socialist candidates at elections. And they were ethical socialists. And at, at the time, socialists were beginning to stand for elections, not parliamentary elections, but elections to be poor law guardians and school board guardians. So the Labour churches offered these people facilities and, and club rooms. <coughs> what a chap called Tom Groom, he was the secretary of the new Clarion Cycling Club, and what he did, he wrote an account of their adventure and sent it to the Clarion newspaper. The Clarion newspaper published this report, and almost overnight, and it really was overnight, all over industrial Lancashire, West Riding of Yorkshire, the Midlands, independent Clarion Cycling Clubs sprang up almost overnight. The Clarion had this mass readership, and people said, well, they've started a club in, in Birmingham, why don't we have a, a Clarion Cycling Club? And an illustration of, of how widespread it was in this particular area. There was a, a club in Clitheroe, but at one stage there was a, there was a club in Blackburn, a club in Ossetwistle, a club in Church, a club in Accrington, a club in Nelson, a club in Burnley. They, they sprang up virtually in, in every town by people who were cyclists and who were readers of the Clarion newspaper. What it led to, it led to a mass movement very rapidly growing in the country. The biggest mass movement since the Chartists. And very soon, not only were there Clarion Cycling Clubs, there were Clarion Rambling Clubs, Clarion Vocal Unions, which was the word for a Clarion Choir, Clarion Vocal <coughs> Unions, uh, Clarion Swimming Clubs, Clarion Football Clubs, Clarion Cricket Clubs, uh, Clarion Ramblers. So, a whole group of clubs sprang up all over the country based on this one report. And the Clarion movement became the, the largest mass membership movement in the country. When the Labour Party was initially formed <coughs> in 1903, the National Clarion was bigger than any political party in the country. The only movement bigger than the National Clarion Cycling Club at the time was actually the, the trade unions. There were also horse-drawn clarion vans. What the clarion vans were, they were it, it was a, like a, a gypsy caravan basically, um, pulled by a horse. It had prominent women speakers, leading sources of the day, people far more famous than Keir Hardy, people like Caroline Martin, uh, Sarah Redditch, uh, women speakers, and they would tour the countryside, stopping at the towns and villages to preach the message that socialism was the hope of the world. The cycling club would ride out in front of the caravan to announce the caravan was coming. They would then try and gather a crowd on the village green or in the market square. When the caravan arrived, they were there to bulk up the crowd but also there in case it became troublesome and they were on hand to uh, stop, any well, stop any fighting rather than start it, stop people throwing stones and cabbages at the women speakers. In 1895, Tom Grew, conscious of these cycling clubs springing up all over the country, because he, he was a clarion leader, decided to invite all the clarion clubs to an Easter meet in Ashbourne. And at that Easter meet, that's where these clubs came together and agreed to form an, an association, not a membership club, because you're a member of your old Clarion Club, but an, an association of Clarion Cycling Clubs. And that was agreed to Ashbourne. They also agreed to adopt the, the trumpet badge as the badge of the Clarion. And they also agreed to adopt the greeting boots. So anywhere you went, you shouted boots. And if the Clarion people in the cafe or the bar or on the road, they would shout back spurs. Now, why, why this came about was that in Ashbourne, these people had never met before. And as the night was coming on, 
dozens and dozens of cyclists were coming into Ashbourne, but you didn't know if they were Clarion members or not. And it's beginning to show door. If they were Clarion members, they needed directing to their lodgings. And somebody came up with the idea that if they shouted boots, <coughs> if they were a, cra a Clarion reader, they would know the significance of it, and they would shout spurs. The reason for that was that Robert Blatchford had been in the army, and in his newspaper, he'd written about his army experiences. And one of the things he wrote about was at night, in the barracks, after lights out, somebody would be called upon to, in army terms, spin a cuffer, which meant tell a story. But because lights were out, you weren't conscious if people were awake or listening. Obviously, in the British Army, nobody ever snored. But, so what this speaker had to do, no matter what his story was, every so often he had to interject the word boots, and everybody else had to shout spurs. So that's where the slogan came from. So in Ashbourne, as a cyclist was seen arriving, you would shout boots. If they were a clarion person, they'd shout spurs. If they weren't, they'd think they were stupid. <laughs> but, but it enabled people to direct them to their lodgings. And that is still the greeting today of the, the National Clarion Cycling Club. And people do still use it. Returning now to William Morris, William Morris was never a member of the Clarion Cycling Club, but his writings were very influential on people who were, particularly on people who edited the newspaper and the early members of the Clarion Cycling Club. <coughs> and William Morris was directly responsible for starting Clarion Houses, which I'll talk about in, in a little more detail. <coughs> In 1895, shortly after the meeting in Ashbourne, a man called Charlie Reapy from Manchester Clarion decided he would run a summer camp. And he ran this camp at a place called Tabley Brook near Nutsford. It was going to be a three week long camp for Clarion cyclists and it attracted 2,000 cyclists. And the camp was deemed to be an enormous success. Charlie Reapy Based on the success of his camp and his reading of William Morris, William Morris wrote a book called News from Nowhere. And in this book, a person has a dream, and in their dream, they dream about a great country guest house, a guest house where socialism is practiced. And Charlie Reaper had read this book, so he was aware of this country guest house, and he decided that's what the clarion needed. The camp was great but the guest house appealed to him. So he set up a company, the Clarion Cycle Clubhouse Company Limited. He sold shares for five shillings, and the idea was, was to get a clubhouse in the country for Clarion cyclists. And <clears throat> very, very quickly, he managed to raise sufficient money to rent a premises in Cheshire, a house called the Acropolis. And that set a trend that other cycling clubs then followed. Again, he wrote about it. You could see the shares were being offered in the Clarion newspaper. He wrote about it in the newspaper. Other Clarion clubs decided they would do the same. And all over the country, 30 odd years before youth hostels, Clarion houses began to spring up. Some were purchased outright. Some were actually purpose built the vast majority were rented on a short-term lease. And the expression to clubhouse for tea became a, a saying within the cycling club. Wherever you cycle, you always ended back at the clubhouse for tea. And your families, perhaps mother, younger children, grandparents, would walk out to the clubhouse for the day, get away from the smoke and the grime, get out into the country in the fresh air, and it would be a, a gathering point, and the cyclists would make their way back there on their way home. <coughs> In East Lancashire, there were actually two Clarion clubhouses belonging to the cycling club. One was at Ribchester, which used to be the Lold Star pub. That building is still there, it's now a private house. That belonged to uh, the North Lancashire Clarion Union. 
and the other one was in Bury at Tottington, and that belonged to the Southern Lights Clarion Union. So we had two Clarion clubhouses in, in this area. <coughs> in addition, the Independent Labour Party, which had very close links with the Clarion, they also built Clarion clubhouses. And the most famous one around here is the one at Nelson in 1899, in fact, before the first Clarion Clubhouse, Nelson ILP decided they would build or buy or rent a place of their own. And what they did, they rented a very small cottage in a place called Thornhill Square, which still exists today. It's between uh, Roughly and uh, Sabdin, not Sabdin, Bali, sorry, between Roughly and Bali, and it's on the right hand side, a very tiny cottage, number one, Thornhill Square. The problem with the cottage was, it was a three mile walk from Nelson, so it was out in the country, quite a pleasant walk. But the problem with it, it's a tiny two up, two down cottage, and over 200 people were turning up every Sunday. So they, they then moved to a place called Nab Farm. Nab Farm is near the present Clearing House, it's in a field, again it's a very nice private house today, they moved to Nav Farm. The problem in Nav Farm was it was very, very dilapidated. It was a bigger premises. It had its own fields, but it was in really poor condition. So what they did, they decided that they would borrow some money of the Weavers Union, and they would build their own premises. And that's exactly what they did on the Ginny Lane between uh, New Church and Rough Lee. They built their own premises, Clarion House, which is still there today. And in fact, that is now the only surviving Clarion Clubhouse in the country, so it's well worth going to. <coughs> in 1911, Cohen ILP followed Nelson's example and they purchased an, an old uh, Moorside Tavern, a place called um, Shellfield, and they opened their own Clarion House. Again, that was for the people of Colm to walk out into the countryside, get away from the dirt and the grime, when the mill closed, get out into the countryside so they would walk up to Shelfield. Again, that's now a private house. The same period, ILP in Burnley opened the Clarion House in a small cottage above Briarfield, and that unfortunately is now still there, but it's a ruin, it's just a tumble down ruin. At the time, there was another important political party called the Social Democratic Federation. And at that time, the people on the left tended to belong to a political party, which was either the Democratic Federation or the ILP. They belonged to the Co-op, they belonged to the Clarion, and in general, they belonged to a trade union. Those are the four credentials if you were on the left. And, and the Clarion was the left-wing cycling club. <coughs> Social Democratic Federation, they had um, a Clarion house at Lane Bottom near Briarfield, and they also had a Clarion house on the main road in Blackhall. Both lived only for a short period of time, but they were there. Some of these clubhouses lasted for over 100 years. Some of them lasted only for one year. They rented them for one year, decided it wasn't practical, they couldn't afford it. Some lasted for 10 years. The last Clarion Cycle Club one was at Menston, just above Otley, and that closed, it opened in 1902, and it closed in 2010. So that lasted for 108 years of that. And that was, that was a purpose-built clubhouse as well. They built a small stone building with kitchens in, and then a massive, uh, Double story dormitory. The dormitory burnt down many years ago, but the local stone clubhouse is still there. It's now a private house. The Nelson Independent Labour Party, Nelson Independent Labour Party, as I said, is the last survivor of these havens of socialism. And that's what these places were they were havens of socialism. If you haven't been to Clarion House, I would certainly encourage you to go to Clarion House. 
It's um, <coughs> it's open every Sunday from 11 o'clock till 4, staffed by volunteers, serves five pots of tea for 60 pence, not like Starbucks. <laughs> also uses real tea leaves, none of these middle class tea bags. It's really good. And every year we have an event called Clarion Sunday, which is the second Sunday in June. And what Clarion Sunday was originally, it was a gathering of Clarion choirs that took place over at Hebden Bridge at Lord Castle Crags. 400, choir, 400 singers would meet out in the open at Ebden Bridge. There would be thousands of scientists who'd come to hear them sing in the open. And that's what Clarion Sunday was originally at the beginning of last century. Five years ago, we decided we would restart this at Clarion House because there was no advantage in doing it at Lord Castle Crags. Doing it at Clarion House brings funds to Clarion House. So we've been running Clarion Sunday now for five years, and uh, it was only a fortnight ago, perhaps three weeks ago, we had 250 cyclists there with socialist choirs and probably 100 other people as well. So it was a really good, good day. So if you haven't been to Clarion House, do, do come. It really is a place for cyclists and ramblers. There is no car parking there. You have to park down the lane. Cyclists, ramblers, friends and strangers, all welcome there. You can have a pint pot of tea. There's always a, a blazing coal fire. There's always good fellowship and good company. And whilst you're there, you can actually share in William Morris's dream. William Morris dreamt of a new society. He dreamt of a society with, <coughs> pardon, with justice as its foundation and love as its law. And that society is going to be a socialist society. And when you come to Clarion House, you will see um, infant socialism in action. There are some free postcards on the table there of Clarion House, in case you haven't been. So help yourself to free postcards. On the back, you have the Socialist Ten Commandments. Socialist Ten Commandments were what was taught in the Socialist Sunday Schools. And when people in the Clarion talk about support for the principles of socialism, they are basically talking about these Ten Commandments. But you know, I think if you read them, they're, they're not too controversial. I think most people can agree with them. There's also a few copies of our newsletter, which was stolen in the edit from the Clarion newspaper. Again, those are free. You can help yourselves to those. If you want to know more about the Clarion Cycling Club, there are some copies of this book. Unfortunately, these are not free, and they're still slightly warm because they've only just come off the press. But not only do they tell you about the club, but they tell you about the Clarion newspaper, Clarion vans, Clarion clubhouses, uh, how Clarion people fought and died in the Spanish Civil War. It's a very good and interesting read, not written by me, by the way. And as I say, it is still warm because it's a brand new edition. Okay, thank you.